Okay, we're now going to use the Select and the Circular Array tools to repeat the number 12 around the clock face 12 times in order to create the other numbers. Now we use Circular Array because it keeps the numbers sitting horizontally so you can actually read them instead of fanning them around so they, they get turned upside down. So that's the Rotate tool. If we move along and click on the draw the circular array of the selected objects it will ask us to please select the object to be transformed so I click on the number 12 and I click on draw a circular array the array is still going to be 30 degrees repeating 11 times because I want to have the 12 numbers of my clock face so I click OK and then again it asks me locate the center of rotation so I click on the center but my grid lock is off so I need to turn the grid lock back on and so I snap to the dead center now I've got my numbers all nicely arranged around the side um, but obviously I need to change the numbers so we actually can read the clock like a normal clock face um, before we do that let's just save again so now we get into a routine. Once you've created a drawing, it's quite complex. We don't want to lose it. Now, what I can do is actually change the file name at each stage. If I want to keep these files uh, to show somebody the stages of creating this, I can save the file with a different file name. So I might call this file save as, and we'll call this it defaults to clock face, but I might call this one clock face 2. It depends what you want to use your drawing for. Now, if I want to uh, change the time uh, or the actual number on each of these uh, numbers on my clock face, I'm going to use the select tool. Select, I might as well do it in order, so I select number 12 where it would be number 1. I go to property and I just edit the properties and change it to number 1. Now uh, you notice that as I change it the position of the 1 might not be exactly where I want it to be because it's moved, it's deleted the 2 on the end and the center of the 2 numbers is here so the 1 might want to move slightly to the right. So I turn off the grid drag the center of the number so it's where I would like it to be and then I move to the next number and I click property change it to number two this time okay that and then move it into the position where I want it to be um, for some of these numbers, if they're on a center line like the, the 9 and the 6 and the 12 and the, uh, sorry, the 9 and the 3 and the 12 and the 6, uh, be careful when you move them around because uh, if you move with the gridlock off, then things can get really, uh, look really messy. So be careful when you move these numbers. So number 3, I click, I click on property. I change that to 3 and then OK. The 3 looks a bit too close, so I'm going to drag that slightly to the right and try and keep it on the center. And then move it so that it's centered. What I'm actually centering my numbers on is this imagining a center line coming through from the center of the clock through the triangle and out. Um, because the triangle, in some ways, isn't helping me position them too well. If I had a single line, it might be easier to see where this should be centered. So this starts a whole design debate with your students. Was it a good idea to use a triangle for these markers or should I have used a line or should I have used a circle? Now, uh, once people have done the process once, you can say to them, you can change the shape to whatever you want, okay? And then it, they can redesign. Once you've done one design, it's very easy to modify it without having to go through the whole process and doing everything again. 
Okay. Um, I'm now going to save that, but I'm, I'll change the number so the next drawing is complete.